So now tell me, Seance is a concept record. I've been just focusing on the bass. So can you explain what these guys were trying to get? What these a group of people are, are having a seance and they're trying to meet the spirits departed? What what exactly is going on throughout seance? I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's something like that. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think the idea is for the for the kind of listener to make up their own mind what's happening. Okay, all right. You've got it in a nutshell. Yeah, it, it's a group of mates that um, decide to hold a seance to contact. Uh, friends departed um, and they end up on this sort of rather unexpected journey um, encountering some kind of uh, weird and wonderful characters along the way including the devil himself um, <laughs> end up in purgatory um, and some kind of parallel universe okay it, it, it's pretty mind-boggling stuff do you know what I've not actually I got this this going to the post today and I've not heard the whole thing um, start to finish. Right. They send me songs out of context. So I've not had time to sit down and listen to it and think, right. oh, okay, so that's how that, 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 that fits in with that, you know. I, well, I you think know, they must, I mean, some of these, I don't even remember recording them. <laughs> it was <laughs> kind of so long ago. <laughs> Well, let me ask this, you know, just in, in terms, just looking over your career, you know, the records you did with The Damned and all that, um, it, you know, in in the age of streaming, is is the album format really relevant? Like, I enjoy listening to a record start to finish, but we live in a streaming world right now. Do you think there is still a place for the LP or the collection of songs? Not, yeah, I mean, a, you know, a lot of bands now, um, will decide to release a single or an EP or a series of singles rather than an album. But, you know, I, I think the, the the bands that I'm with, you know, The Damned and uh, Sensible Grey Cells and, and The Madman are kind of of that age where doing an album is a nice thing to do. You right. Know, it's nice to package songs up um, that often, especially with Sensible Grey Cells and Madman, will relate to each other and make something a bit more than just having a series of random songs um, put out. You know, it, it's a story wrapped up in lots of other little stories, if you like. Right. So, but you know, I'm I'm old fashioned. You know, I I, I grew up in the early seventies. Um, sure. You know, that's when I kind of uh, um, started. You know, getting into music, and I still love that whole tactile thing about having a a, a record. You know, a CD's all right, yeah. rather than a Spotify or something. But, you know, actually having a piece of vinyl, which is why, you know, those three bands um, are releasing everything on vinyl still. Yes, yes, the collectors. When you look back over your career, when you look over The Damned and, and Captain Sensible and all the records you've done, even some of the stuff you did with Johnny Thunders, what are some of the uh, performances you think stand out? What, do you, what are some of the records you hold most fondly? Oh, God, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Um, Eddie and the I, really like, the, I like Life on the Line. Um, okay. Eddie and Hot There's a track on that called Beginning of the End. And it's only three chords. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's three chords, I mean, at the, when I joined the Hot Rods, I was six, just uh, just shy my 17th birthday. Okay. And the other guys weren't much older than me. It was a four piece band. Mm -hmm. The guitarist that we had. Um, was of the kind of Mick Green, Wilco Johnson style of playing. Right. With, it was mostly rhythm guitar with a few kind of little blitzy leads bit, lead bits, you know, thrown in. Mm. So they basically said to me, make a noise on the bass, make it sound fuller and bigger. Uh -huh. So <laughs> that's how I've sort of ended up being a, a pretty busy player, although I try not to be too busy all the time. Um, and with this song, uh, beginning of the end, because three chords, there right. was a little space to do it. So I kind of went to town on it, and it's ended up as a um, pretty much bass driven song, the first sort of bass driven song right. I did. So that was good. And we did the whole album in 
I think three days from start to finish with Steve Lillywhite producing it. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of set us off, you know, um, on, on uh, being, you know, a pretty successful band. Right. Um, you know, working with Rob Tyner from the MC5. Right, you did work with Rob Tyner on the Rods, yeah. Fabulous, you know, and he came along with with, um, with his songs and he played them on an auto harp. Mm -hmm. Which wow. you wouldn't think the singer in the MC5, <laughs> <laughs> Marshall wow. Specs, yeah, auto harp, no. Um, and again, he, he just said, do what you want to do on it. So mm -hmm. that was all pretty much one take. Um, some great stuff on the Black Album. I mean, I, I like everything I've done. I can't, I, it's very difficult to choose one thing over another. Especially well, you know what's, what's interesting there, you know? about the streaming world we live in, you know, in, in, in our day, we're uh, the same age, um, you know, records went in and out of print. Now I can make my own uh, Spotify Paul Gray list and I can have just about everything you've ever recorded. So I guess we could say that, you know, uh, even though streaming, we may lose the tactile romance of, of having an LP, we do have uh, more access to music than, than ever before. That's very true. You know, it, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? it? It's it's great for the consumer. Yeah. Um, not so great for the artist for all the reasons. Not at all. You know. yeah. So you know what you do, you 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 kind of got to got to go with the times. But the nice thing is now that we can choose, or the punters can choose what format they want to hear it on. Right. So stuff will go on Spotify. Stuff will go up on Apple Music and Amazon. Stuff will go up on iTunes. Stuff will go out on CD. Stuff will go out on vinyl. With the Sensible Grey Cells, we're doing 100 cassettes. Cassettes wow. are massive in Germany now, apparently. So, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool, isn't it? That's what, yeah. five, four, five, six different formats. So it's nice to be able to choose, have that choice, so people can sort of access it. And of course, a lot of people will buy you know, the vinyl and they'll, they'll download it and then they'll probably Spotify as well. Mm -hmm. And and finally, Paul, wanted to ask you now on uh, your website, uh, paulgraybase.com, you're offering uh, an opportunity to do remote tracks. So we talk about uh, the best of times with technologies. Now, anyone around the world can record a bass track with Paul Gray. They can. And I hope they do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I sat up a couple of months ago, Paul Gray Bass Online, just be, well, for two reasons. A, because I really like sitting in my room here, mm -hmm. recording the bass and whizzing the files off. It's, it's, it's very simple to do. Um, B, I, I, because all the touring was down to pan, right. um, but a lot of free time, and obviously, the, the majority of income now has gone from all that for at least another year. Sure. Um, yeah. And I want to see what else was out there. So um, I've had some really interesting things come in. Um, there's an American guy called Craig Walker that's got um, uh, a great track with Mike Garson playing keyboards on. Oh, okay. Um, and all these things are really unexpected. So um, I'm kind of, I'm hoping it will rack up a little bit. Um, right. And, you know, I'm very accessible. The, the only criteria is I kind of have to hear myself on it and like it. Um, <laughs> and as I like most sorts of music, even though I don't play any of the sort of slap and tickle stuff, um, <laughs> you know, if I, if I can hear myself on it, then, um, you know, we'll, we'll have a go. All right, well, that's great. We'll certainly link people up uh, to your website. And uh, all right, yeah. man, thanks for talking. Congratulations on another great album. And when you make another one, we'll talk again. Pleasure. Cheers, mate. Take care. Ta-da. Bye-bye. Gotta throw my cell phone out. Gotta put the laptop down. Can't meet another.